This is Jay Chandrasekhar. Hey, and this is Kevin Heffernan. We made movies like Super Troopers and Beer Fest. You're watching Comedy Matters TV. Enjoy. Hey, this is Jeffrey Gurian for Comedy Matters TV here down at the Soho Grand with Jay Chandra Sakar and Kevin Heffernan on a very exciting day, the opening day of the Baby Makers. How are you guys, first of all? Oh, we're aces. Couldn't be better. <laughs> aces is a good expression. How are you doing? Awesome, awesome. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's hard to top aces. Oh, I mean, you can't top aces unless you got the Joker. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I saw the Baby Makers the other night because you came to the Friars Club, which was very cool. And it was a nice screening. Well, I mean, look, the history of the Friars Club is uh, is just it's just impressive, and and to get to walk inside that building and see those pictures of Frank Sinatra, I mean, I I, I couldn't have been more excited to show it there. Well, I'll tell you, Milton Berle was my original sponsor in the Friars Club. Uh, is wow. that really true? Yeah, I swear to God. And did he did he ever tell you uh, if he really had like an enormous rope? Oh, he showed it to me. And? <laughs> and I almost tripped over it. I thought a snake got loose. It was crazy. It was. Cra I didn't ask to see it, by the way, in case you were wondering. Are you? You're not feeling left out over there. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, I feel okay, good. good. I feel good. Yeah, uh, it's Milton actually Pearl's rope is what we're talking about. Well, he's known his to have, member. He's known to have a legendary, legendary it member. Fits perfectly into the baby makers, because it's about a guy whose thing is not working right. You know. And yeah. I mean, it. It. Uh, it's about a guy, Paul Schneider, who's trying to have a baby with his wife, Olivia Munn. Mm -hmm. Um, he finds out that he's shooting blanks, mm -hmm. uh, and then you find out uh, a couple of years ago when he needed extra money for his wife's ring before his, uh, his member went uh, south. Um, <laughs> before it went on strike. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, he used to donate to a sperm bank mm -hmm. uh, when he needed extra money for his wife's ring. And so he tries to go back and get his last sample uh, available. They have already sold it to another couple. And so he puts together a team of guys to stage a sperm bank heist. You know, a lot of people are calling this Ocean's Eleven with sperm. <laughs> Which is a very uh, pertinent kind of a remark. Uh, sperm banks are interesting fodder for material, I mean, for humor. You know, um, how'd you come up with the idea? Well, uh, actually, a, uh, a friend of mine wrote the script, and he was a guy. I made a movie with this guy a couple of years ago. His name uh, Pete Gawkey, and he wrote a movie called Strange Wilderness. And he used to write for SNL, and, and he's a stand-up for a long time. And he had been going the, through this problem with his wife, this fertility problem. Mm -hmm. And so he wrote this script about you know some of the funny things that happened to him, and then he put this heist part into it, which we thought it was hysterical, and he let us read it and asked if we were interested, and we said, yeah, we'd love to try to get it made. And so we set it up at Warner Brothers at the time. And, was uh, that after you did Dukes of Hazard? You you had a thing with Warner Brothers? Yeah, it was right. It was between Dukes of Hazard and Beer Fest. I think we set it up, mm -hmm. and then um, and then it just kind of fell apart. You know, things go up and down, and mm -hmm. and it went through like different incarnations, and and finally, Jay was able to find the money, and we put it together and shot it. W w uh, where'd you find the money? Under your couch? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Uh, my uh, friend Jason Blum produced the Paranormal Activity series mm -hmm. uh, and also Insidious, and so. He's made a name for himself making low-budget horror movies and sort of competing with the studios uh, w when they distribute them. And so he called me and he said, do you think we could do the same thing with a comedy? And I said, you know, we have this movie at Warner Brothers. And he goes, the, the deal is it's got to have a big hook. And I said, there's not a bigger hook than this, a sperm bank heist, right? So I called Warners. They were kind enough uh, to give it back to us. And uh, within a week or two, we were greenlit and going. You know, a sperm bank is the only bank where when you make a deposit, you lose interest. <laughs> That's a great joke. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I had to do, I just, I had to do that, you know? I just had to do that. Um, you come up with this idea, and it was a broken lizard project, is that correct? No, this wasn't, actually. This is uh, just Kevin and I made the film together. Uh, the other lizards are not involved in this one. I think the next broken lizard movie we do will either be Super Troopers 2 or, or Pot. Uh, fest. It's the coolest thing. You guys were friends at Colgate University, is that correct? Yeah, we met when we were eight, 18 years old, and then we started the group that would become Broken Lizard when we were 21. Mm -hmm. And there's five of you guys in it now? And it's like every guy's dream to have a, a group of friends first in the first place, because mm -hmm. most guys aren't that lucky to have that many friends. But to be able to make movies with them, right. that's a dream come true. That's I mean, great. that's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. I mean, we didn't think it would happen. We were just a bunch of guys like doing comedy shows in college. And here we are. Uh, mostly sketch stuff? 
Yeah, mostly sketch. We did a little improv, but it was mostly sketch, and I think that's how we kind of learned to write, you know, and uh, and perform and and shoot videos and films and stuff like that. Well, I saw you guys the other night at uh, the Bowery Ballroom, okay. and it was a fantastic show. I mean, the first the place was packed. It, it was like 500 people there, is, you know. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it, uh, you never know who's going to turn out, and uh, and I've been traveling around for the last year doing stand up, and sometimes the audience comes, sometimes they don't. But last yeah. night. I mean, they I, really I, came out, and know. they were loyal fans. Yeah. They were yelling out stuff. They had a lot of questions when you did the Q and A. Yeah. I mean, it was really awesome. And I was saying to you at the time, you have great comedic presence. You're storytellers. You weren't doing traditional stand-up, yeah, right, right. but you're storytellers. And can I say, I hope you understand that I mean this as a compliment. You're like a thinner, good-looking John Candy yes. presence. Yes. yes, that's good. I love John Candy. Do you, so you understand that as a compliment? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because he was larger than life on yeah. stage, and that's who you are on stage. I mean, your comedic presence, you're both that way. What's but, exciting about what just happened is you just used the words thinner and good-looking in a sentence while you were talking to my friend Kevin Heffernan, and I don't think that's ever happened to you, has it? Has it ever? Yes. My God. This is a moment. See that? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? No, he has a great presence on stage. When you hear so much comedy, I've been a writer for years and I've interviewed lots of people, but not all comedians have a great comedy voice on stage. And you both have that, a resonant kind of radio kind of voice. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It makes a difference when you're doing comedy. People respond to a voice. Yeah. You know? It's not just that the stuff is funny, which it was, but also the presence behind it. Yeah, makes no, a big difference. I think it has to do a little bit. We both have kind of a, you know, we did a lot of stage stuff, and we have a little stage background. I think that, mm -hmm. I think that, that gets you that across. good uh, good speaking voice kind of a thing. So how often do you guys get to New York? I come about four or five times a year. My friends make this show Royal Pains, and uh, they shoot oh, it here. Uh, in, uh, in the Hamptons, right? Yeah, they shoot it in, in the Hamptons, and so I shoot, that, I shoot uh, one or two a year, and I usually come for that. And... We'll always do about two stand-up shows in town, and whenever we have to promote something, we come here to the floggy city in the, in the world, the most media ever, right? So we come here and flog it. What happens when you go back to L.A.? What are you going to be working on? I'm going to do uh, a bunch of television shows, uh, direct them. Uh, the show Community, I'm going to do two of those. Oh, really? oh, yeah? I've done some in the past. Uh, Happy Endings, Up All Night, Animal Practice, Ben and Kate, which is a new one on Fox, starring... Uh, this guy, uh, Nat Faxon, who, who played the character Zigzag in our movie, and also won the Oscar for writing The Descendants. So I'm going to go direct that. So anyway, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was really great to see you guys. You. Uh, where is the film opening in Manhattan, The Baby Makers? Let people run out to uh, see it. 11th, 11th Street and 3rd Avenue at the Lowe's. The AMC Lowe's. The AMC Lowe's. Lowe's. Avenue, oh, yeah. It's gonna be, gonna and be it's a millennium film as well, right? That's right. Millennium Pictures. M M Millennium Pictures. Entertainment. Millennium, Entertainment. Millennium Entertainment. Let's get it straight. It's Millennium Entertainment. So, yeah, and they're both starring in it as well. Yeah, so anyway, I wish you guys the best of luck, man. Thanks. It was really awesome. Thanks, Thanks man. I'm really glad I got to see you cool. guys yeah. while you're here. Thanks so much.